Welcome to Trading Soda for Real Estate. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I'm going to do a screen share and get started. Welcome to Trading Soda for Real Estate. This is a five-year game plan for everyday people to achieve retirement status in five years or less. Five years, you might be thinking, why five years? My question to you is, why wait? Isn't sooner better than later? For many of you, you may be needing to make up for some lost time. If you're like me, you may have experienced a setback. Perhaps you've lost a job, the pandemic, maybe your retirement account took a huge hit. There's a myriad of opportunities for folks and reasons that they tell me that they've had a setback. It doesn't matter. The bottom line is you are not prepared to retire on time right now so you're looking for other options some of you may be having some really big dreams you want to make a big impact on the world perhaps you want to leave a generational legacy for your children your grandchildren your great-grandchildren or maybe you even have a cause that you care deeply about some of you are just ambitious and you want to see what's possible with your life for others you want control over your time you want to do what you want, when you want, with those that mean the most. You want a better quality life. Maybe some of you are retired or semi-retired. Or maybe that Social Security check isn't enough to cover, or you know it's not going to be enough to cover the gap that you have for the lifestyle that you want to have during your retirement. Health and life cycle. Some of us, you know, you're not getting any younger. And you need to be able to enjoy that retirement while you've got really great health. There's no guarantees of tomorrow. And depending on where you are in that life cycle, you know, for me, I have eight grandchildren. I'm not quite 60 years old right now. I'm pushing it. It's right here at my door. But there's a lot of things that I want to do with my grandchildren. And so I want to make sure that I have enough cash available to do those things. Some of you may not really care for your job right now. Perhaps you'd like to fire your boss and quit that nine to five and really go and pursue your passion. While others may want to own and operate their own business and they might need some additional funds. No matter what the reason is, you are here today because you've been intrigued by the title. Do you really believe that it's possible to fund a retirement account in five years or less. Stay tuned and find out. My name is Nancy Gaskins and I'm a strategic business partner for global entrepreneurs. I host and facilitate a variety of platforms virtually where entrepreneurs can gather to connect, partner, and profit. One of the things that we do is we have our Lunch and Learn Zoom Friday, every Friday from 1130 to 1 Central Standard Time. I also host a mastermind once a month, and we have a wealth building club called Passive Income Generators. I'm a really proud U.S. military spouse. My husband is a retired disabled veteran, Army veteran, I might say, hua hua. And I have globetrotted around the world, chasing after him from duty station to duty station since we were basically teenagers. We have now been married for almost 40 years and have eight beautiful grandchildren. One of the most crazy things that you probably won't believe is I have now moved over 30 times. I come from a long line of entrepreneurs, my grandparents and my dad is just really, they were truly Renaissance men. And my stepdad, he had a love and a penchant for 
real estate flipping and he was really good and I also started doing that as a child my job was to glean the newspapers and try and look for really great deals for him to find and flip and starting in first grade was he fixed a house and he flipped it we moved to the next one in just four flips he was able to go from a small clapboard house to a tri-level beautiful home several thousand square feet with a swimming pool in the background and that was from first grade to eighth grade it was really truly amazing what he was able to do he had excellent carpentry skills and my dad he was a serial entrepreneur and he had a flying service and he used that flying service income to fund all of his other business ventures my grandpa was the same thing he had a lumber company he had a construction company and he was a farmer and he was a farmer in cattle as well as crops and he was the first person in our region to have electricity he was able to do that one of the first ones in our county to have a tractor and it was pretty amazing that he was able to <laughs> drive an old tractor all the way from memphis tennessee to northeast arkansas so i really love the legacy that both of those men brought forward to me in 2009 I moved to Destin Florida this was a dream come true for me and my husband my husband was severely injured in Iraq in 2006 so he is a Purple Heart recipient as well as a uh, bronze star and I moved here ahead of him this was just truly like I said it was a dream come true we have a hundred miles of sugar white sand and emerald green water here on the emerald coast and if you've never been here to our community i really encourage you to do it it is spectacular so anyways moved into a condo down there and i got involved in the short-term rental business and most of you have probably recognized that by thinking airbnb or vrbo and those type of things i have hosted people in my home I have uh, used other properties and, and hosted people there and I have over a 95% satisfaction ratio five star almost perfect rating on the platforms and I really love it and have had a wonderful wonderful time in 2010 I wrote and published a book called trading soda for real estate which you can see here the Destin log which was our local newspaper put me on uh, the cover there for that so anyways just wanted to give you a background on me I am a serial entrepreneur with a love of real estate and making money and working with entrepreneurs the first step in planning for your retirement needs is you need to have a little bit of background you need to see how you compare against what's going on out there in the world and since I'm in the United States we're going to be using United States household income as our data points and I know a lot of people say don't compare yourself with others no but you need some benchmarks to kind of see how your household income can stack up against others so right now in 2021 the median household income is 67,521 that means if you lined up all the households in America half would be more than that and the other half would be below that so that's a really good indicator it's different than the average household income because when you use average you could have some people who made millions and some people who made you know a couple of bucks and that would really skew the data so this gives you a midpoint to kind of look at the top 20 percent was at 224,988 the top 10 201,000 and the top 5 393,662 so where do you fit in perhaps you might want to look at this and and make one of these your goals and all I did was do a quick Google search on January 30th to come up with that information for you so do you have your number do you know how much your annual household income is all right we will continue okay step two is you have to figure out what's your number how much do you need what is your financial goal for this five-year retirement plan so we're going to start with a few assumptions number one is we're going to assume a three percent annual inflation we all know that the price of milk eggs and cheese and everything else goes up each and every year 
So generally speaking, you can typically use 3% as your annual inflation rate. Next, most financial planners will tell you that you can count on about 5 to 8% APR annually, that's what that means, on investments during your retirement period. The next thing is how long do you expect to live? That's very important because you don't want to outlive your money. So if you're younger, you're going to need more years available, right, and more income. If you're a little bit older, maybe not so much. I believe the life expectancy right now in the United States is around 88 years old. So again, when you're planning for planning purposes, you need to keep that in mind. Next thing is taxes are not considered in this example. And again, I'm not a financial planner. I'm not a tax expert, none of that. I'm just giving you some numbers so that you can start planning. So you need to get with a financial planner, your tax advisor, your CPA, whatever, to help you come up with the right number for you. Next, for our example, we're basically just gonna see how much it would take to replace the current household income. So if you was the average American and you wanted to replace your income, that was $67,521, how much would you need today to invest at 5% a year to come up and give you an annual income of $67,000. That's the number that we're gonna be looking for, okay? Okay, so here we go. How much is it gonna take to replace your current household income? Assuming that you're going to get 5% a year, it's going to be compounded monthly, and I do have a video on my YouTube channel that you can learn more about the calculators that I use, as well as the different compounding periods and why that makes a difference. But in this scenario, we're going to assume that you're going to withdraw $70,000 a year. I know it was about $68,000 in the example, but just to make it easy, I said $70,000 a year. You're going to increase that by 3% a year to adjust for inflation. And remember, no taxes or anything are considered in this example. So if you'll like, take a look at that, the math ended up being that you would need $1.5 million in some investments, could be a variety of investments, earning 5% a year, and that would give you your first year $70,000 you could take out. And I would also encourage you, again, I put this in another video, but you wouldn't take that all out in a lump sum. You would take it out monthly, weekly, or whatever, so that you would not lose the interest that you were gaining in your investments. So year one, you would take 70,000. Year two, because of the 3% inflation, you would take out 72,100. That's in order to keep up with, uh, you know, the cost of goods that are rising. You continue on till you get down to year 10. And one of the things that I want you to look at is you start with a 1.5 balance and you keep going down through there all through your one, two, three, four, five. And you notice that your balance continues to go up until you hit year eight. And then what happens? You're looking at $1.495 million. Well, what's happening now is you're starting to eat into your principal because of that 3% inflation. So depending on how old you are, when you do this calculation, you need to figure out how many years that you're going to want to be retired and how much you'll want to uh, have that annual income. Another thing to consider is, do you want this to go all the way down to zero? By the time that you pass away, do you want any money left over for your family for them to inherit? If so, you're gonna have to adjust your numbers or you need to make sure that you have enough in your account. Again, I just did this for 10 years for the sake of brevity and also my space is a little bit limited here. So again, if you wanted to withdraw $70,000 a year and you need to know right now how much it would take, it would take you about $1.5 million to do that. So do you have $1.5 million sitting in an account right now ready to retire? Most of you would probably say no, okay? So that's why we're here today. We wanna to get you to this point, right? That's the whole point of this five-year game plan strategy. 
five years is not a very long time. Trust me, you'll turn around two times and five years will come and gone. But when people, when I'm talking to them, you know, 20, 30 years, most people don't have that long or they don't want to have that long to wait until they retire. So sit there and think on that for a minute. $1.5 million to take out 70000 a year. Now, what if what you're having right now, what if the average amount of income is not enough? Maybe you want a better lifestyle than that. Then guess what? You're going to have to kick that number up a little bit, aren't you? So we really need to work to figure out what's your number. What's the number that you want to shoot for? Okay, so, so far, we figured out how you compare with other households across the United States. And we have figured out how much it's going to take for you to replace that income if you were the average American. So you know your number. It's $1.5 million. Now the question becomes, how on earth, in five years or less, can I come up with $1.5 million so that I can retire? Where do you start? Well, again, you compare what's available in the marketplace today. You go out there and you look, you do some Googling. It's not hard. It's all out there, public information for you to see what the historical returns are. So we're going to dig into each one of those rather quickly. Okay, so the first investment that we're going to look at is backed by our government, by the United States Treasury. We've got treasury bills, treasury notes, and bonds. And you probably heard these called T-bills, notes, and bonds. And the maturity level can be anywhere from three months to 30 years. Basically what this is, is you are loaning the government money. And they are paying you back with interest. So when you buy like a $100 savings bond or something like that, you don't pay $100. You pay less than that. And then when it matures, you'll get the $100 face value. But I want you to look at the rates right now. And this was pulled on February the 5th. 1.25%. 0.24%. A two-year treasury note, 1.316. A T-bill is usually about three months. The notes uh, can be anywhere from a year to, you know, 30 years or whatever. But the most that they're paying right now is 1.316%. So you give them a dollar and you're going to get a penny, a little bit more than a penny back for that treasury note. You are not going to be able to retire if you was to invest your money in treasury notes, I can assure you. Might take you a couple hundred years at that rate. So 1.316, is it safe? Most people would think yes, anything backed by the government would be safe. And usually what happens is low risk, low return. Now, it has been a lot better than this in previous years, but this is just what's going on today, Feb as of February the 5th. So this is your T-bills, notes, and bonds. And remember, when you hear that, what is it? You're just basically loaning the government your money. Also, you, can, you hear bonds out there. Corporations can authorize bonds as well, utility companies, all different things. So anytime you hear the word bond, what that means is you're giving them a loan and they will pay you back later. You might have also heard the term junk bond. And what that means is there is a rating for bonds based on how well their credit score and how they've handled their business and all of that stuff is. So when you hear something called a junk bond, the chances of you getting paid back is going to be slim next to none. And also, the reward should be higher because the risk is higher, right? High risk, high reward. Always remember that. All right, next on our list is investments from financial institutions, such as banks. Most people would consider this to be extremely safe and not have to worry because most of these are 
backed by the government, right? They got that FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance, that can uh, help them should something happen and the bank become insolvent. So what are some of the instruments that you might be familiar with? CDs, also called Certificate of Deposit, Savings Account, and then Money Market Accounts. The CDs right now, the one-year national average is 0.13%. Savings accounts is 0.06%, and money market accounts are 0.07%. This was based on bankrate.com on February the 5th. Now, one thing I want you to notice here, that's not 6, 13, and 7%. All of these numbers are less than 1%. So you give the bank, loan them your dollar, and you're not even going to get a penny. You're not even going to get a half a penny or a tenth of a penny. Currently in the United States, the penny is our lowest denominator. So that's how bad it is right now in the United States for what our banking institutions are offering you. So again, if you think you're going to retire in five years, you got another thing coming, not at these rates. Next stop, the stock market. For those of you who may not be familiar, the stock market is a list of all of the companies that are out here that are publicly traded each and every day, going up and down, up and down, up and down. They have sold stock to the general public around the world sometimes. And on average, the stock market, believe it or not, has returned a 10% average annual rate for almost 100 years. Pretty impressive, right? Now, we all know, based on the last few years, and especially since the pandemic, it's been pretty volatile, but just know that historically, for about 100 years, it's, it's been uh, about a 10% average. Now, we have something that's called the S&P 500, which is standard in Poor's 500. It's 500 of the top uh, best companies, and they have returned, their average is a little bit better than the stock market as a whole which is 10.5% since it's 1957 inception through 2021. So again, so we're looking at a compilation of all of the companies that are included in the stock market exchange. And we're not going to go into mutual funds, but a mutual fund is a pretty cool instrument. And what that does is that is where you can put your money in instead of just having one stock you will own a little percentage of a bunch of stocks and it can be by the industry it can be by you know basically the type of company or maybe growth and you know there's a variety of different ways that you can have mutual funds and it's really uh, a great tool a great tool so anyways again the stock market you can expect about 10 10.5 percent and again you're going to have some bad years you're going to have some good years but overall over 100 years, when you go back, they have averaged about 10%. So just keep that in your bonnet and remember that. Next topic, one of my all-time favorite investment vehicles is real estate. I love real estate because you can touch it, feel it, see it, hear it, and you can control it. Unlike stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, they have board of directors, they have CEOs, they got, you know, economic conditions, a myriad of different things could happen, and you have zero control over what goes on in those companies. So your stock, you know, could basically go all the way down to zero, be worthless. Unlike real estate, another thing that I love about real estate is, generally speaking, the value of your real estate will continue to go up each year. And as you pay, if you have a mortgage, as you pay down the mortgage, you know, your equity is larger. So you're getting a really great return if you buy right. And that is, you know, the value of your property goes up. The amount of equity that you have goes up over time. And it's just a wonderful um investment vehicle for me it may not be everybody's cup of tea and you may be wondering well i don't want to be dealing with toilets well neither do i so you set things up so you don't have to deal with those calls in the middle of the night so let's talk about real estate and how well it's done over time the biggest crash in u.s history was back in 2008 everybody that's listening here probably remembers that what happened was there was a big old huge bubble because these banks and financial institutions got greedy and they started basically giving bad loans 
to people who could not afford those homes. And what happened was eventually it all came crashing down because they couldn't pay their mortgage notes. And the government had to step in and bail out a bunch of these financial institutions. Now, the good news is it has since then rebounded and far exceeded the pre-cash conditions. It only took a couple of years for it to correct, to get back to normal, and then some. The worst case scenario is it fell 30%. Now, it did not fall 30% across the United States, but just generally speaking, it fell 30%. Some areas were hit harder than others. For example, my area down here in Northwest Florida was not hit near as hard as everybody else was. One of the wonderful things about where I live is, one, we're a vacation destination. We have 100 miles of sugar white sand and emerald green water. So we're a vacation destination. People love to come here from all over the world and vacation. Another thing we have going for us here is we are home to several military installations within an hour radius of me. You've got Pensacola, NAS, home of the Blue Angels. You've probably heard of them. You've got uh, Eglin, Hurlburt. You've got... Um, down Panama City way, you've got several of these military installations that have have uh, you know have to supply housing for our military members. Another thing that we have going for us is we have a lot of government contractors and a lot of people want to retire here. So we have civil service retirees, we've got government employees and contractors that come here. So we have this wonderful built-in market of several different things. So if one you know has a problem, then the other can probably. Uh, catch up for that. So anyways, that was really great. So overall, how is real estate done? When I did the research for that, from 2000 to 2021, it averaged about 4.94% a year. And from 1928 to 21, which was the inception of when they started keeping these records, I guess, I found that it was 4.36%. So bottom line, Everybody needs a place to live, whether they buy or rent. We'll get into the specifics on what's going on right now in 2022 with the real estate market here in a couple of more slides. But for right now, what I want you to know, again, I'm just trying to teach you some basic fundamentals here. The biggest crash in U.S. history was in 2008. The market fell 30%. It's rebounded, come back better than ever. So think about this. In other investments, you have an opportunity to lose 100%, right? The chances are very slim next to none that your real estate investment will go down to zero. Even if your house burnt down and you didn't have the money or the insurance to rebuild, that land is still worth something. They're not making any more land, folks. So the supply is limited but the demand is large and it will always be that way so keep that in mind these are just a few of the things like i said why i really love real estate another one of my favorites is business opportunities i shared with you that i'm a serial entrepreneur i'm an idea gal we could sit down and i could talk to you and we could probably come up with 50 new business ideas over the course of an hour this is something that i just really really love to do it's a gift of mine and um, you know i think it comes from being always around my grandparent my dad and and all of that but anyways i just love business opportunities so if you were to invest in a business opportunity, there's high risk and high rewards possible depending on the type of business opportunities. Now there are direct sales and different things like that where it's, it's low to get in and the opportunity is high rewards. So yes, there is a possibility, but I'm talking more in terms of uh, a little bit big, bigger business ventures. So, for example, angel investors, they expect to get their money back within five to seven years, and they also expect a 20 to 40 percent internal rate of return. I'm not going to go into that, but just basically know that, of course, it's high risk, but they expect a high reward, and they're either going to want a big payoff or they're going to want a piece of your company. Venture capital funds, they strive for the higher end of this range, sometimes even more. And the National Bureau of Economic Research, the average return for business opportunities was about 25%. So again, this is a, I love this because there is so much potential out there. And right now with technology, 
and with the crypto world going on and foreign exchange, there is just so much opportunity out there. It is just mind boggling. And one of the things that our Wealth Builders Group does is we encourage people to bring us business ideas every month. We want to vet and look and test out as many business opportunities as we possibly can because, you know, we're, we're looking for that needle in the haystack. And the more opportunities that we view, the better options that we're going to find and the more money that we're going to make. So I just absolutely love business opportunities. But again, keep in mind, if you're looking for high risk, you should expect to get high reward. If a project is high risk, you should expect to get high rewards. Low risk, lower rewards. One of the most exciting things going on right now is the blockchain technology with cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, foreign exchange, artificial intelligence, all of that stuff. Now this is, even though it's it's not brand new, but it's fairly new. And most people, it's just kind of now starting to get a little bit mainstream. So I want to talk about the pros and the cons. The pros are extremely high returns are possible. I mean like exponential returns, like stuff that you would not even in the stratosphere believe. For example, a couple of the projects that we've been involved in since April of last year, we're averaging about 2.89% per week compounded weekly. Yep, you heard me right. 2.89% per week. That is not per year. That's not per month. That's not per quarter. Folks, that is per week that we've been getting. The cons, this is extremely high risk. Unless you know that this company has a solid track record for results and a lot of them are brand new startups. And so again, high risk, high reward. But most of these are high risk and you, the potential to lose your capital, it's very, very real. So obviously you wouldn't want to risk, you know, your entire life savings or anything like that on this. But there is lots of potential out there and we are exploring all the options. For example, what happened to me Christmas 2020, I want to tell you about that. I accidentally... Uh, I asked for a refund for this company. I wasn't pleased with what was going on. And so they said, well, we'll give you a refund, but we have to give it to you in Bitcoin. And I believe this was in like the spring or fall or something like that. And I was like, okay, no problem. So I got out my crypto wallet and I sent them a little, my uh, scanner. And they sent it to me and it sat in my wallet. And y'all didn't do nothing with it. It just sat there. So it was Bitcoin and it just sat there and sat there and sat there. And I don't know if you've been following Bitcoin to see what happened. Right now it's kind of going through some uh, up and down, some pluses and some minuses, pretty volatile right now. But we had a long stretch where, buddy, that stuff was just going up, 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 up. And along comes Christmas and I opened up my Bitcoin wallet and I was shocked at how much that stuff was worth. And you know what I did with it? I was able to buy my entire Christmas for my family with Bitcoin. I can show you how to do the same thing because a lot of you are saying, well, how'd you, you know, get, get the Bitcoin into cash and all that? Well, there's ways that you can do that. But anyways, get into that later. I just want to say that cryptocurrency is real blockchain technology and you know, all you've got the non-fungible tokens, which is the NFTs. You've probably been hearing that. So it's really high risk, but there's some extremely high returns possible. And we are proof that it can happen because we've got three projects going right now and they have all been consistent since April. And most of them have been in business for several years or longer. So we expect it to continue on. As I mentioned previously, I have several platforms in which we have a group of entrepreneurs that we meet in order to connect partner and profit. And one of the things that we did was we co op some money and bought a website. It was going to benefit everybody in the group. And so we all put our money together. We pooled our money and we bought this website outright. I negotiated a really great deal. And then we started looking at virtual events, book publishing, and some other things that this co op worked so well. 
training, you name it, we decided, you know, hey, we could all pull our resources and we could all have a lot more than what any individual could do. So along comes April 2021 and I launched a co-op for wealth building. So we started this little wealth building club and what happened was every 90 days, our members would pitch in either 30, 50 or 100 bucks. We would vote on what projects that we wanted to test out and vet and see what happened. And at the time, we really was interested in FinTech. That's financial services and technology. So we're talking Forex, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, blockchain, artificial intelligence, and all of that stuff. And, uh, you know, we learned, we learned some really good, valuable lessons. We found some really great companies. We started getting all kinds of people sending us all kinds of fabulous projects for us to vet. In fact, so many that, you know, we couldn't keep up with them. And we've not been able to fund a lot of them that we wanted to. And so this is where we were. And so at the end of the year, which was December, when it was all said and done, you know, we had a great, great return on what we would had put in. So we were just thrilled to death. One of the projects, though, we lost our money. And that is always a hard nut to swallow when you lose your money. One of the companies went belly up. So what I started doing after that is that really bothered me. Now, all of us are entrepreneurs and we understand the risk and reward scenario. So nobody was upset and all of that stuff. It was just, you know, it's a fact of life. When you're dealing with investments, you, you know that there's never any guarantees of income or anything like that. But I got to thinking, gee, what could we do? What could I do to prevent that from ever happening again? Well, you can't prevent... You, there's a lot of things that are just out of your control, but what you can do is you can minimize that ever happening again. So this is where this program was. I got to thinking, wow, you know what? Let's resurrect some things that I did back in 2009 and 2010, and I think this can take care of that situation. So that is brings us up to today. So our co-op is still going strong. We still do that. And again, we just get together once a month and for an hour and a half and we discuss what's going on in the marketplace out there and find and bet business opportunities around the world and we put our money where our mouth is and we test them out what ends up happening is it really increases your confidence level why because well when you're looking at the group you're talking about people from all over the world who have different experiences skill sets knowledge um, you know that we can go so it really does minimize your risk right along and getting to leverage the power behind that group has been just truly amazing. So on the last slide, I talked about how I wanted to figure out how we could minimize risk while maximizing our returns. We were getting some fabulous returns. We've on average almost 3% a week. But again, that's extremely high risk. So how can I take advantage of that and some way protect as much as possible our capital investment? And this is where the real estate comes in. Because why? Real estate is way less volatile. Now it's less liquid as well. But if you have a rental property, every month you get what? Rental income generated off of that. And the likelihood of that going down to zero is slim next to none so a home or a rental property basically is a cash machine well what if you use that as a cash machine and use the monthly rental income to fund your investments now you've got a perpetual cash machine month after month after month that is giving you money to invest so if one of those projects goes belly up or doesn't perform as well as what you'd expected, you don't have to worry because the following month, what happens? You get another rent check coming in, right? So that is the premise behind the Trading Soda for Real Estate program. I want to give you a little background and give you a real estate snapshot of what's going on right now in the United States. Home prices are soaring. A lot of the renters are happy to stay put because there's not enough houses available for sale. 
Also, apartment occupancy is at an all-time high, 97.5% is considered actually way over full occupancy, even though most of us would think, well, 100%, but according to, you know, the apartment gurus, about 95, 96% really is what they consider to be full occupancy. So, the average sales price 2020 was 389,400 and in 2021 it was 408,800. As you can see the prices went up in some areas more than others. I know down here where I'm at we've had like an increase of like 21 percent over the year. So it's really really crazy what's going on and and our homes down here if they're priced right, they're sold, there's multiple offers. I'm hearing that all over the United States that people are having to buy sight unseen, just going through the virtual tour. Same thing with rental prices. Rental prices right now down here, they're going for over a dollar a square foot. You know, dollar, dollar ten, dollar fifteen, that is not unheard of, which is absolutely crazy. So I encourage you to check your local market. These are average sales prices. So of course, you know, there's some that's going to be higher, some that's going to be lower. And one of the places to go would be Realtor.com as well as Zillow.com for you to get some information on your particular area. So just wanted to kind of give you that visual and let you know what's going on. The prices are skyrocketing right now. Okay, you might be wondering, so what's the plan? It's a very simple concept and very easy to understand. Number one, as funding becomes available through our sponsorship program, we purchase one residential single family home with cash time and time again. Within 30 days, we rent that sucker out. And after all the bills are paid, we're going to use that excess cash flow to invest in outside projects. What kind of projects you might be asking? Those that have a track record, those that have great potential to provide an above average return month after month for 12 months. On the third Tuesday of each month at 11.30 Central Time as well as 6 p.m. Central Time, we meet for 12 months, once a month. We discuss our current projects as well as new projects that are available in the marketplace. Periodically, we may need to adjust. We may need to cash out some of our investments in our projects and move them into new projects or just pull out and decide what we want to do. It's a democratic process. At the end of five years, which is the term of this overall dollar a day real estate program that we're talking about, the balances of each count is cashed out. 85% of that will be returned equitably and split as a revenue sharing royalty reward among all sponsors. You can take that money and do whatever you want to with it. It is a gift. You can move it to a more stable investment for your retirement purposes or do whatever it is that you want to do with that. Our goal obviously is to help you retire. So our overarching goal would be that we help you create enough cash that would fund a retirement in five years or less. As a reminder, how exactly does this minimize risk when we're matching the real estate investment with the higher business opportunities? Well, the rental property is a 12-month perpetual cash machine. If a project goes belly up or it doesn't perform as well as expected, you always have another rent check coming in the next month. So that's one thing. Next thing that you need to think about when you're doing this on your own is that home will be yours to do with whatever you want. So you could possibly use more than 12 months cash flow to speed up your results. So what if you did it for 24 months, 36 months, 48 months? What if you did it for the entire five years? I just wanted to show you what the numbers will be in this example for only doing this for one year and then allowing you to use the rental income to add to your family's bottom line. So again, the choice is yours, but I just want you to see that when we're buying this rental property, we're, the reason behind it is we want it to be a cash machine to generate cash. And then we use that cash to fund these business projects, those that we, ha we expect to provide a higher than normal return.
Have I got you excited? Are you wondering what's possible? Well, I want you to make sure that you are setting down because sometimes unless you see these numbers in black and white, you just won't believe it. <laughs> so get set down, get you a piece of paper, and I don't mind if you even do a couple of screenshots along the way. Okay, here's example one. Example one, and you can think of this two ways. One is if this is one of the projects that we have sponsored through our program or whether you're doing this on your own. So the first one is, let's say that you have a rental property that your cash flow is $500 a month. That's down here on the bottom. Year one, you would be putting in 500 times 12, which would be $6,000 a year. You would earn $8,635.28. And at the end of year one, you would have a balance of $15,135.28. Now, this is assuming the amount that we've been getting since April, weekly compounded interest. At the end of year two, three, four, and five. At the end of year five, I want you to take a look. The total interest in five years $7,061,596.21. Yes, that's not a typo. Your balance at the end of that year, all things equal, you know, in a perfect world, we all know there's no such thing as a perfect world, but let's just say it was a perfect world. We would end up with $7,092,000, so basically $7 million. And do you remember how much that you needed to replace your income? about $1.5 million, so you would have achieved that in year four. Now, when we're talking about doing this as a project together as a group, royalty rewards, 85% of that would be $6 million that would be distributing among all of the sponsors. 5% goes to the founders, which is the first 1,000 people that sign up. 80% goes to all sponsors, so again, sponsorship let's say for this was five hundred thousand dollars the return on sponsorship would be one thousand two hundred and six percent in five years exciting huh not a typo one thousand two hundred and six percent and this is if a rental project would give you five hundred dollars a month in cash flow so you pay for it in cash you get the rent check you pay your expenses and whatever is left over, that's the amount that I'm talking about. So in this example, it's $500 a month on average. At the end of five years, $7 million, not bad. Okay, here's example two. In this scenario, we had the same amount of sponsorship, $500,000. Only this time, this property would cash flow $1,000 a month. $1,000 a month per month for five years. If you go down to the bottom row, you're going to see that we would have deposited $61,000 over the course of this five years. We would have earned $14 million in interest for a total of $14,184,192. That would be if this project cash flowed $1,000 a month, $14 million. Let's look up here for the royalty rewards for those of you who would be participating with us as a group. 85% of that $14 million is $12 million that would be distributed among all the sponsors. 5% goes to founders, 80% goes to everyone. The return on sponsorship, if you're counting that, would be 2,411%. That's over the course of the five years, 2,411%. Guys, these are not made up numbers. This come right off of a financial calculator. Amazing. Wait till you see the next one. If you thought the other two examples were exciting, wait till you get a load of this one. 
this would be the goal of every project. We go on the internet that day and we look and we see what the current mortgage rate is. And if we were doing a 100% owner financing, this would be what we could get a bank loan for. So the goal would be to figure out how much that $500,000 that we would have to pay for a mortgage rate. And at the time of this example, it was $2,242 a month. So what would be fabulous, even though this is not going to happen every single time, but this is our goal, is that we would get that amount in cash flow at least on each property. Okay, again, I'm not saying this is going to happen every single time, but this is the aim. This is what we're looking for when we're trying to find a really super good deal. It's not necessary that this happens every time because we're making up for it, more than making up for it on that compounded weekly projects that we're investing our rental income in. But in a perfect world scenario where all the stars are aligned and the planets are aligned, this would be the epitome of what could happen. So that means that we have $2,242 every single month that we can invest. Look at this. At the end of five years, we would have deposited $136,000 we would have earned $31,664,197.41, and we would have a balance in our account of $31.8 million. That's $31,800. So let's look up here at our royalty rewards. At 85% would be $27 million that we would be able to distribute and gift to our sponsors. 5% would go to founders, 80% would go to all sponsors. What would the return be on that sponsorship? 5,406%. 5,406%. Crazy, right? I told you this is stratosphere. This is unbelievable exponential returns. It's not crazy math. It is the magic of compounding interest. Not just any kind of compounding, but weekly compounding. And if I really want to get you excited, if you're not so excited that you can't hardly sit down, one of our projects is fixing to transition from weekly compounding over to daily compounding. And you want to talk about a big game changer? For our bottom line, the more often you compound, the higher your returns. So the options, you know, one time a year, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily, which one is best? Absolutely, hands down, daily. Next best, weekly. So again, soak this in just a little bit. $31.8 million dollars. If our project cash flowed $22.42 a month. You may be sitting there thinking, well, that's all fine and dandy, Nancy, but I don't have no three, four, five hundred thousand dollars to invest to buy a rental property right now. Guess what? No problem. Do you have a retirement account somewhere? Did you know that you can set up a self-directed IRA and invest it in almost anything that you want to, such as real estate, crypto? You've got almost in, endless, limitless opportunities. Check with your financial planners, and if you need a name or a referral or something like that, you can get with me to help you with that. And, you know, one of the things is when you're growing this thing for exponential growth like that, obviously you want to talk to your tax accountant and tax advisor, your legal counsel, to make sure that you're um, minimizing your tax bill, right? Because that is huge. That would be a huge capital gain. So you want to make sure that you do that. But you might be thinking, well, I don't have a retirement account, Nancy, so what do I do then? Guess what? No problem. Okay, so you don't have a 401k retirement account that you can pull money out of. You don't have a rich uncle that died and left you an inheritance or a grandparent or parent. 
You don't have just an extra three, four, five hundred, one hundred thousand, 100,000, whatever, just sitting around to invest to go buy a house. What if you are starting with zero? That's okay. This is where a lot of us are having to start. So how can you fund this house purchase? One, you can get a side gig and start investing your money on the side and building that account up so you have enough to buy a house. Next, you can revamp your budget. I'm saying all the time, you know, you ever thought about trading soda for real estate? Most people spend more money each month on pizza delivery, takeout, going out to eat, and all of those things when they should be taking a little bit of that and investing for their future. They just don't realize how much it is that they're spending. So I really encourage you to take a look at your budget to see what you can do to start setting up your family on an investment budget. Next, you've got tax refunds coming up here pretty soon. Even though I am totally against tax refunds, I know a lot of you use that for a savings account, even though I'm not going to shame you, but shame on you anyways. Don't do that. Don't let them borrow your money and use it all year long. You take that same money and use it yourself and invest it. <laughs> but those of you who do get a tax refund, go ahead and think about setting aside a portion of that for your financial future. Next, even though this is not recommended, a lot of people have done this simply because they see that they're making more on these investments than they are paying out on their credit card expense right now, especially those of you who might can have that where you transfer the balances over and get 0% for X amount of time. So you might consider using one of your credit cards to start you on your way to start building an account for you to buy your first home. Next. You could take out a mortgage if you've got great credit and if you've got a low um, income debt to income ratio or you could use other people's money. I don't encourage you to do either one of those because the premise behind this is to pay cash so that you can use that excess cash flow as a way to invest. Other people's money, that gets uh, nasty and gnarly sometimes. You need to make sure if you decide to do this that you set up a, a proper legal structure for that, whether it's a partnership agreement or whatever. And I don't care if it's your mother, brother, aunt, uncle, sister, brother, best friend in the whole wide world. That is dangerous territory. So when you're using other people's money, make sure that you have that set up correctly in case something happens. Last but not least is the Wealth Building Club. Obviously, that's what we do. This is what I'm promoting. And this is... Um, I strongly encourage you to do a variety of all the things above as well as joining a wealth building club like ours. So what are some of the benefits of joining a wealth building club? Well, number one, by leveraging the knowledge, skills and experience of all the members in the group, you can minimize your risk and maximize your profits. It's amazing when you get a group of entrepreneurs from around the world together. They challenge you. You're inspired to rise higher, go further, faster. It is just truly an amazing thing. Next, earn as you learn. It's affordable. You can gain confidence. Month by month goes by, and as we start vetting and actually testing out these business opportunities around the world, you begin to see some trends. You see what's working, what's not working, and you may want to take your own money and invest in some of these projects outside our group. Next, we have access to way more diverse global opportunities. You know, you're only one person, but when you get 50, 100, 1,000 people together where they're all out looking for business opportunities, it is amazing what we come up with. Think about this. How many times have you probably in the last year somebody come up to you and want to talk to you about a business opportunity and you blew them off, right? Well, our group, we don't blow people off. We say, sure, I'd love to look at it. It may not be right for me, but it might be right for somebody else. And then they bring those forward. Because again, what's right for one person may not be right for the other person. Or it may be something that we want to, as a group, take a look at and put a little money in as a group collectively and see how it pans out. You never know. So again, don't discount those business opportunities. Have your radar up. Always be listening for a new business opportunity. All right, it's time to talk about our five-year game plan strategy. It's no different than the one that I outlined and have given to you. We have a group of sponsors. We buy single-family homes. 
We use the rental income for 12 months to invest in new business opportunities around the globe. After five years, all of those accounts are cashed out and 85% is distributed equitably among all the sponsors as a thank you gift. Those are revenue sharing royalty rewards. Sometimes it pays to be first. This is definitely one of those times. Again, to reiterate, at the end of five years, the balances of every count that was created using the rental income is calculated and 85% is distributed equitably as a revenue sharing royalty reward for the sponsors. 5% right off the top is gonna go to founders. That is the first 1,000 people that sign up. Next, 80% is going to be distributing among all sponsors and that also includes the founders. So if you're a founder, you get to be rewarded two times, one in that 5% and again in that 80%. So what do you have to do to qualify for these revenue sharing royalty rewards? The first thing you have to do is sign up and become a sponsor, sponsor a rental property. You can do that with only $1 a day, a minimum of $365 a year. You can sponsor more than one home depending on your budget. Step two is we ask that you share it across social media, tell all your friends and family. The goal is for every member to refer at least three other people. This will ensure that we can fund our first project in record time. The more money we have available in our kitty, the more properties we can purchase. The more properties that we purchase obviously means the more rental income we can generate each month, which ultimately lends itself to more business opportunities that we can bet, fund, and test out in the marketplace. And of course, over the course of the five years, can be a big, huge difference in our bottom line. How much does it cost to sponsor a home? $99 a year plus $365 or $1 a day minimum per sponsored home. Multiple sponsorships are authorized and we also have other options. $365, $1 a day is the minimum, but you can also participate as a sponsor in the other increments of $500, $1,000, $2,500, $5,000, or $10,000 per home. I do offer a quarterly payment plan option for those of you who may be interested. Also, as a sponsor, you need to get with your tax advisor if you are a business owner and check out whether you can deduct this as an expense on your form as advertising and promotional expense or sponsorship, wherever they put sponsorship, depending on your country and how that's handled. Most of the time it will be under advertising, promo, marketing expense, so you can write that off. Another thing that you need to be very aware of is gifts are non-taxable. Again, get with your tax attorney. In the United States, I believe you can gift up to $16,000 a year without any tax consequences whatsoever. Again, I'm setting this up as a revenue sharing royalty reward. It is a gift. It is not guaranteed, but on every dollar that each of these projects make, 85% is set aside and designated as a revenue sharing royalty reward, for which at the end of five years, I will be uh, rewarding that back to all sponsors as a thank you gift for your support in this project. Other things to consider is we plan on writing a book, making some publications, showing what we've been able to do, demonstrating what we've been able to do and our success. And so that also will be part of this. So any money that we make off of any of that stuff also will be included in this. So again, we meet on the third Tuesday on Zoom at 1130 Central Time and again at 6 p.m. Central Time. These are also recorded for those of you who are not able to attend each month.
Here comes the fun part. We have to always include these disclaimers as part of the legal process. Past performance does not guarantee future results. There's no guarantees of income or express or implied. It's against the law for any business to state otherwise. Passive Income Generators is an affordable Earn As You Learn educational platform where everyday families can come to explore wealth building opportunities around the world. All business comes with inherent risk. Risk can be minimized but never eliminated 100%. Do not, do not put your family in any kind of financial jeopardy. If sponsoring a home will do that, please don't do it. We have to be very careful with our terminology, legal-wise, so I need to give you this statement of understanding. Sponsorship should not be misconstrued as an investment. As a thank you gift for your support, 85% of all the revenue generated by each project funded by rental income is set aside and designated as a revenue sharing royalty reward for sponsors. Again, it will be a gift. Rewards will be distributed at the end of five years beginning on the first rental income receipt. It is expected that all members will provide at least three referrals during their first 30 days of membership. So what's next? How do you get started? It's very simple. Just go to itraininvestors.com. That's itraininvestors.com. Enter your email address, and it will put you on my email distribution list where I will send you a link for registration as well as a link to some videos that I've created for you and an orientation video. Welcome to the Passive Income Generators, Trading Soda for Real Estate, a five-year game plan strategy for retirement. My name is Nancy Gaskins, sowing seeds of hope and financial opportunity in communities around the world. I hope you found this very informative and I hope you're as excited as I am about getting involved with passive income generators this year and helping by sponsoring some homes. Are you ready to retire in five years or less? Me too. All right. You may have already got here. You've already probably done the itraininvestors.com, which is how you got the link to this video. And if so, and if you're ready to get started, you can text hashtag show me the money and text that to 850-499-7149. That's 850-499. 499-7149. Hashtag show me the money and I will send you the registration link. Now, one thing to note, the $365 or your sponsorship is not due right now. What I do is take a list of all the registrations and I keep track until we reach our $500 contribution pledge amount. Once we reach that amount, then I send everybody out an email and say, okay, it's time to start. You'll have, uh, you know, probably a week to 10 days to get your sponsorship dues in. All right. Thank you again for joining us. If you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to reach out to me. You can find me on social media. LinkedIn is Nancy Gaskins on Facebook, Nancy Sue Quinn Gaskins. And you have my text. Have a fabulous day.